All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego, well, rainy San Diego, actually. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Ontario in Canada by John Gillum. How are you doing, John? Yeah, doing well. Uh, not not raining here. It's a little bit of snow, but yeah, doing doing well here. Well, if it starts to snow here, that'll be a, a real issue. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Jonathan is the founder and CEO of Originality.ai, a trailblazing venture in the realm of artificial intelligence and content originality. John founded Originality uh, after successful building and later selling two content marketing agencies. And uh, so what we're going to talk about today is... Uh, is really the whole area of reviews and AI and how you know you can use humans in collaboration with AI to overcome what is probably going to become more and more a problematic area where AI, where we don't know what's real anymore, right? I mean, I think that's the big issue. We don't know what's real. And I just noticed actually, John, not to get off topic, it was quite funny with Air Canada and their being taken to small claims court and then them trying to claim that the AI chatbot was somehow not related to them. It wasn't yeah. their fault. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's true. It's, it's a, it's an interesting problem that everyone's gonna be wrestling with when you unleash these AIs. And, and if they're, if you're attempting to have them speak for your company, yep. what, what are they going to say? <laughs> so, um, so let, let's, let's kick this off. But I wanted to know, first of all, um, tell me a little bit about, you know, why you built this, uh, you know, this, this, this product and, and then talk to me a little bit about what are the problems that you're seeing out there with, with AI generated content that's been passed off as real, especially in reviews and things. Cause we used to say, Oh, look, reviews, you know, that's the, that's the consumer, that's the currency of success and all of that. But now we don't know whether that's real or not. Yeah, no, I think that's. I think it, it's it's interesting. It's definitely the case. So, I mean, the background is um, built and sold some content marketing agencies. Um, at the time, we had systems in place, and we were trying to be as transparent as possible about when AI was used in content creation and when it wasn't. We had a mm -hmm. service that was AI enabled content, and the customer, like our customer, knew that that was AI generated content. Right. And then we had human generated content. Um, and we we had sort of systems in place and procedures to try and manage manage if that was AI content or not, um, but there was no really good check the same way that you would have had with plagiarism. You know, a lot of people are happy to pay a writer a hundred dollars for an article. You're not very happy when you've paid that writer a hundred dollars and they've just copied and pasted it out of ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted to put the power in the hands of the publisher to choose the to either accept the risk of publishing AI content or um, or ensure that they weren't publishing any content and, and sort of a fair fair value exchange between writers and agencies and and ultimately the customer and the publisher were 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 happy. So that was kind of where we started. We launched actually the weekend before ChatGPT launched, oh. and then uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a bit of a wild ride since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting because I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people on on social media platforms saying, oh, you know, you can do all these side hustles, you can get all this job, and some of them are like, oh, you know, you can do a you can write reviews or you can uh, take, uh, they want it uh, translated from audio into text or whatever, but they want humans to do it. But people in, are saying, oh no, here, let's here's the hustle. Look, you dump it into, you let uh, Google listen to it and then type it out and then send it in. And there you got 400 bucks without doing anything. And this is, this is obviously the issue we're facing. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, it's, it's an issue. It's an issue across the board anytime, whether it's a, like people are filling out surveys using, using AI, um, you know, it's it's a it's a challenging world that we're need, now needing to navigate on the societal impacts and the sort of we're getting into those sort of second order societal mm -hmm. impacts of unleashing this kind of power on onto the world and what we could use to be able to rely on as being human generated is now questionable on mm -hmm. on whether it was or whether it wasn't. Um, and you know, you, you mentioned reviews. We, yeah. We've sort of since we've launched our tool. We've been using it a lot to try and understand the sort of polluting is kind of the wrong word, but it's a little, it's a little too aggressive, but sort of the pollution of generative AI content across the internet. Where is it going? Where do we want it to be? Where do we not want it to be? And so we're seeing in re some review sites, up to 30% of reviews right now are AI generated reviews. And I think most people, to your point, when they go to review, 
if they if they knew that that was an AI generated review, they would not be very happy that to to be reading that review, and they would probably trust it less than the known human generated review. Yeah, and and I think that's the big that's the big issue is just the not knowing and the the lack of transparency that that that's out there. So do you? I mean. How do you how do you address this, or how do you overcome this, or if you're a company, how do you make sure that uh, you or at least are setting the right tone? Yeah, so I think I think there's you, we we so you know we're not anti AI. We're just sure. want it content. We're 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 we want it to be used when it makes sense to be used. So we have um, some of our AI research team are non native English speakers, and they write some content for our website to talk about the research that they're doing. Mm-hmm. And they use generative AI to um, to help their content right. flow better, um, mm-hmm. and it's a great use case. Um, we don't disclose in that in those cases. I mean, we're, we sure. share that we do it, but we don't necessarily like say this was a human written AI edited article. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's what a lot of companies are starting to do is to try and um, get their whether it be their writers or their sort of consultants or their advisors to communicate to their customers when it has been used and when it hasn't been used. It's it's a pretty clunky solution right now. And I'm not sure what the end outcome is going to be, but I think that's it. If there's, if it was just pure AI generated content that someone is reading, I, I know people wish they knew whether or not that was the case, because I think their, their level of confidence in that content for, I think most people would, would go down. Yeah, no, and I think that's a really important point. There is is the fact that if people knew, then they would be more discerning about the content that they're consuming. Not to say they wouldn't consume it, but they would at least go, "Okay, well, this was AI generated," and you know, sometimes AI isn't isn't one hundred percent accurate, as we know. Yeah. What do you think is the best scenario where, for humans and AI to working in in close harmony? Yeah, I think I think. Uh, um... I think in a perfect world, the societal costs of of this problem would could be diminished if there was uh, if we sort of settled around disclose sort of rules around disclosure. Um, mm. And you know, rules is maybe too strong of a word, but like similar to like you know, we have there's there's standards around citing of of material. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's ultimately where I think we're going to get to um, is you know communicating that this was. AI generated human edited or AI human generated AI edited. Um, I think that's, that's going to ultimately be where I think best in class companies that are trying to ensure that there is, that they are achieving the efficiency benefits of AI with, without sacrificing the trust with their audience are, are going to need to get to. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that most people would, uh, you know, are happy with, they understand, like, there's a lot of obviously efficiency and productivity gains through AI, so that maybe, maybe it's the, it allows you to focus the human to focus on more high level activities, maybe more personalization or whatever. But I, I think people are fine. People would be fine with that if they were saying, mm-hmm. yeah, there a human is working with AI to bring me the best. Out, output possible. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I, I think that's that's exactly what people want, and and I think what how the best use it. I think what you know to your point, what we're seeing is that that you know if if there is a hustle out there, there's going to be people finding a way to to use it to 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 sort of execute that hustle. Um, and the way it's being used now is, I, I think a lot of people are consuming AI content without being aware it is with no human in the loop to verify that the the information is is accurate Mm -hmm. and google is having a very hard time um dealing with this incredible onslaught of ai generated um non-human improved potential spam yeah yeah. well because you have uh i mean as you said i mean people react they build tools and stuff i mean you have out there you could generate your content using ai and then you can run it through another system to fool google that it's not generated by ai which is i don't know this is a crazy world we live in but you know there's so i agree with you i i think we need to come to some agreement whether it's regulation or not but some some you know, social contract, as you said, is where yeah. we're just transparent about things. Uh, because like I said, I mean, if you're, if you're taking the trouble to 
create something with AI and then run it through another tool to disguise that it's AI. I mean, you got to start to question what you're doing. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I think I think there's you know that you know in sort of my world of like SEO content mm -hmm. marketing, um, you know, there's there's always been um, what feel like hacks at the time um, mm -hmm. to sort of trick trick Google, trick people. Um, you know, those those are usually short lived. Um, I think this is this is hopefully another one of those cases where yeah, the mass produced AI AI spam. Um, Google will will fully get their hands around because I mean it's an it is an existential threat to mm -hmm. them that if their result, search results are filled with nothing but AI generated content, then their um, then why would people go to their search results? Why mm -hmm. wouldn't they just go direct to the AI that will then know more about them and provide a a better answer, a more customized answer to that search query? So yeah, I I, I think it's it's a it's something that Google has to deal with and and are trying to deal with with some some recent updates. Um, so it is producing some some interesting outcomes around the 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 tools that are coming to try and to try and yeah create mm -hmm. content and then trick Google yeah. that it isn't content, which which don't work very well. Um, <laughs> those those bypasses are, are not very effective. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it reminds me of like you know it reminds me of you know all the scams around professional cycling. It's like you know taking taking performance enhancing drugs and then taking masking agents on top of that to mask them and all of that. I mean it, it's almost the same. But uh, what do you think? What do you think Google and other organizations? What do you think they're going to do? Where do you think they're going with this? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it's probably not a technical challenge. It's just an, an economics mm -hmm. challenge for them to to be able to really wash it i mean google like i said google's face is an existential threat where if if everyone goes to google and all they get served is ai generated content then there's no reason for them to exist people would just go to that ai yeah. eventually and get the answer there in a more customized tailor useful useful way for them and so google has to deal with this problem um and they have attempted to deal with that with some updates. Like there was the helpful content update, which prioritized user generated content. And so they're sort of trying to outsource the um, identification of human generated content to sort of the mods on, on Reddit, because it's mm -hmm. hard to get sort of fake content past the mods on Reddit. Um, and so a lot of these companies that publish content have to deal with it. Um, you know, we were involved in some studies uh, with the Guardian and, and New York Times, where there was a lot of Kindle books that were being AI generated Kindle books, providing travel, and in one case, dangerous mushroom picking advice um, in their books. And then using our tool, the, those journalists were able to identify that those, um, those books were very likely AI generated. Um, and Th that is a problem for sort of any any middleman that is distributing content, yeah. whether it be Amazon or Google. Um, it's it's a it's a challenge that they have to deal with. And again, it's it's not a you know the AI research team at our company is yeah. extremely smart. I'm pretty confident that there's equally smarter smarter people at Google that could build the same infrastructure that we have or similar. Um, and but it's just an economics problem for them to constantly scan the entire internet to identify what is and is not AI. And they probably don't want to do that, but it might be what they end up being forced to do if there are mm -hmm. other mechanisms for detecting quality content don't uh, aren't, aren't up to the task of the of the spam tidal wave coming their way. Yeah, and that's a, that's interesting what you just said about the Kindle books there, because I mean, obviously there is, you know, you start to run into, or you will eventually run into liability issues, right? I mean, if you were, if you were publishing Kindle books or whatever, and they're AI generated and they have, I mean, as you said, dangerous mushroom picking, well, that's a, that could be a disaster, couldn't it? If, you, if they tell you the wrong thing and you end up like uh, killing yourself on some crazy mushrooms. But I mean, I think this is coming as we as we mentioned, like you had the whole Air Canada thing. But I think this is coming where people are going to, and especially given the society we live in, people are going to start getting litigious over this. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean, you know, there, there's a debate who who owns it. And I think that has become pretty clear that it is it is not, you know, the the a pretty clear in that I think the position that AI takes, the position that most users of AI take, is that the output of an AI is the property of the person that requested that content mm -hmm. that person that put in the prompt um 
uh, otherwise it's gonna be a big problem for for the for the ai companies to get to get people to use them mm -hmm. they, they want that to be the case users want that to be the case but then with that comes the responsibility that if you have then facilitated that content to be published without a human review or with a human review and it's harmful um yeah i think it's gonna get litigious yeah and and, and i don't know where it's gonna totally play out um but I think, you know, maybe that's why the, some of the AI companies are pushed so hard that, no, no, you, you own that, that output of, of our, of our LM, if you've requested it, um, we, that's not, that's, we don't own it and we don't, we're not liable for it. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I think that's going to be an interesting one, uh, to, to defend going forward. But, uh, the other thing too, I think, uh, as people get more familiar with AI and particularly with, with writing prompts and, uh, it kind of starts to, it does start to impact on, on just regular search, doesn't it? Because I mean, now you have something where, you know, you can put in, you know, your prompt and you can get very detailed and all of that. Something that if you tried to do on regular internet searches would like, it would probably break the system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I personally, I don't know. Yeah. Curious to hear if you sort of your, how, how much your search volume has decreased compared to, compared to your, um, chat GPT usage, but there's certainly some aspects of that, that I would have normally used, um, Google, but I'm now mm -hmm. using either exclusively chat GPT or some combination of the two. Like I'm trying to learn something that I'm nerding out about with, <laughs> with some from electronics, then I might use a combination of the two. Um, but yeah, no, I've definitely found myself, I'd say maybe I'm, I'm moved 10% of my search volume to, um, chat GPT at this point and pro it's probably going to increase. Yeah. And do you think then that people like Google are going to have to adapt to that? I mean, to make it so it's a more seamless experience, not that you're not like writing prompts in AI and then you're doing the old and, and in uh, right. Google. Yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, I think they certainly are already trying, um, you know, with Bard and then, you know, rebranded mm -hmm. Gemini, you know, with Bard, with, with, uh, with, with Microsoft. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's, I think it's going to be, I think, uh, I think their first attempts as is always going to be the case with any first attempts on integrating kind of the, mm -hmm. the, the Google search and answers wasn't, wasn't exactly what people were after. Um, and it kind of broke the exchange of value between Google consuming people's content and then sending them traffic. And that was mm -hmm. always sort of a, uh, an implicit fine agreement. Yeah. Um, if Google just consumes all the content and then provides the answer and cuts out the web, <laughs> then they'll eventually get cut off from from that new content, um, which maybe they'll care about. So, anyways, I think I I think the current implementation is not going to stick, and there's going to be quite a few iterations before mm -hmm. there's something that that genuinely sticks. And I think it's going to be a far more integrated experience, similar to what is offered at ChatGPT right now, but including that sort of a chat interface, but with a lot more dynamic inclusion of information from the web. And uh, and and just finally, I mean, I think uh, based on what you're saying here is uh, as things develop, I think there's obviously going to be, because we're always worried about, oh, you know, roles disappearing and all of that. And uh, but there's, but to my mind, there's going to be roles that become more critical, like the editor, like the moderator, right? So, and I think, you know, if 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 I see a piece of content and it's it said it was labeled like uh, generated by AI, edited by a human, I'm like, good, looks good to me. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think that rather than look at this as oh look, all these jobs are going to go away, it's more it's more like you're going to reorganize and create these roles that are applicable going forward. Yeah, no, fully, fully agree. I think no, you know, for, for the history of sort of any technological innovation, there, there's, it, it has generally been the same situation where a piece of technology and one person doing that job now replaces ten people that were doing that job. So mm -hmm. I do think there's going to be sure. um, this some displacement of of writers, of mm -hmm. artists, of developers, um, but there's going to be so much more output that those roles will move into the yeah. review because i think there'll always need to be a human in the loop for any kind of mission critical act activities that are that are happening with with creative development um and so yeah i think the the same has always been the case where it's not necessarily ai taking someone's job but it's 
somebody using AI that is then displacing 10 people that used to do that job without AI. And I think that's going to be the same. What's different is that this is now being applied across many industry, whereas sort of when the the loom came out, it replaced weavers. Yeah. And that was sort of a discrete use case that was getting disrupted. Whereas I think the breadth of the disruption that is happening with generative AI is is unique um, compared to other sort of similar um, technical ev evolutions. Yeah, no, it is. It's really kind of like taken. It, it's across the whole knowledge economy for sure, yeah. and then and, and not just the knowledge economy. And um, well, listen, this has been fascinating, John. Uh, thank you for these insights. Uh, all of John's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and originality.ai. Yeah, so originality.ai was created to, to help people understand uh, the the true source of the content that they're publishing and ensure that the publishers were the ones that were accepting the risk of either um, getting the efficiency of publishing AI generated content um, or or ensuring that they weren't publishing AI generated content and people are happy to pay a writer $100 for a piece of content, not happy to find out that that content was just copied and pasted out of ChatGPT in five seconds. And that's what originality is uh, here, here to help with. Fantastic. Well, listen, I recommend you go check it out. Uh, and obviously, you're doing a lot of research. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of great insights and information. This is a very, very obviously fast moving subject area. So uh, I, I encourage you to go check it out. Originality.ai. As I said, all John's information will be below this video. So thanks again, John. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Okay. Thanks, John.